everybody smile. So, uh, everyone, we've got a nice, lively, brand new uh, kids' song that Kim's going to be leading us in, so get limbered up, okay? Hello? <laughs> All right. Give people another moment or two to get logged on. Good morning, everyone. As you're logging on to our service this morning, and good morning to everyone who has gathered here this morning. Uh, I wanted to, so it occurred to us uh, last week that um, we're not passing the plate when you're online. And so uh, we wanted to show you how we're doing a virtual passing of the plate. So I wanted to let you know right here, here's one way that we pass the plate, a way that you can give online Use PayPal at stgeorge-sc.org. And then if you want to go straight to the PayPal link, you just go forward slash online giving, just like that. I want to hold it up for just a minute so everybody can see it. There's another way to give online, and that is Go to the App Store, whether you use uh, uh, the Google app, the Samsung app, or the iPhone app, and then download the Givelify app. Now, this sounds complicated, but it's very simple. You just go there, find Givelify, download it into your phone, and then you search for St. George's Episcopal Church, Somerville. And it's a very easy app to use, and when I give online, that's the one I use a lot. Now there's also the Venmo app. We're not hooked up for Venmo yet, but we will be probably by the end of the week. Because a lot of people use Venmo. And then of course there's the old fashioned way where what we do is that we mail a check to St. George's Episcopal Church and here's our address. Now this is for all of you far and wide and near at home or even here in the pews today. That's how you send a donation to the ministries of St. George's Episcopal Church. We'll begin our service very shortly, and I'll do one more mercenary advertisement just before the sermon, in case some people have missed that opportunity.
Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Must be stage fright or something. <laughs> Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Please remain standing. I'm going to bring Miss Kim up. And we know this kind of as a kid's moment, and we're doing this for the children in all of us. These yes. are BBS songs. Yes. And so we want everyone to enter in with great gusto. Just remember what it was like to be seven or eight years old and the way you used to run around the house and make your mom and dad go crazy. That's what this moment is all about. Because we want to show God our active love, even with our bodies, as well as our minds and hearts. Absolutely. How's everybody doing? Everybody okay? There's been, uh, you know, so many things that kind of you know, get into our heads, and I think because of the pandemic and the isolation that we feel sometimes, it's like those thoughts just get in our heads, those worries just kind of magnify. I love that prayer that we just had, cleanse the thoughts of our heart by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. I mean, sometimes we just need God to just remove all of those worries, don't we? So this is one song, and I hope it gets in your head and in your heart, and then you'll enjoy it. All right, here we go.
Good job, everybody. Thank you, Ms. Kim. And everyone can be seated now while Tracy reads the word for us. is from Isaiah 15, 15 through 21. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found and I ate them. And your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand, I sat alone. For you have filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Today's Psalm is 26, verses 1 through 8, and we will read responsively. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted the Lord, and I have not faltered. <coughs> Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless. Nor am I to work with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession around your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and counting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. And our epistle is our Romans. Bless you. Romans 12, 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another, another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. 
Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take them, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sequence or gospel hymn is hymn number 675, Take Up Your Cross to Save Your Sin, verses 1, 3, and 5. <laughs> began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo, and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it. Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is, for the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will repay everyone for what he has done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, bear with me for a moment. We've discovered as we look at our Facebook audiences, we know that people are, uh, there are more people online watching the service for the sermon than there are after the sermon for communion. And I get that, because who wants to sit here and watch everybody else receive communion here in the church while you can't partake? So what I wanted to do is to take a moment, in case you missed it, to simply say again how you can contribute to the ministries, the continuing ministries of St. George's Episcopal Church. First, you can mail a check to 9110 Dorchester Road. Here is the address right here. Next, online, you can go to the App Store and download the Givelify app. Finally, you can go to St. George's website and go to the PayPal link on our website. And we hope soon to be able to add Venmo because we know that a lot of people use Venmo these days. Okay, that's good, that's said and done. Now, <clears throat> important as it is, we have even more important things to do and that is to get into the Word of God. According to Tina Turner, singing as a wounded and a jaded lover, love is nothing more than a second-hand emotion. Remember that? What's love got to do, got to do with it? And then, who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? She's talking about the selfish sort of love that can come between human beings and do more damage than good. That bring disappointment and disillusionment. We know that, but what do you think of a man who actually sold his soul to the devil? So selfish was his love. Love can be an awakening of physical attraction that changes the course of people's lives, that can be history. In the tragical history of the life and death of Dr. Faustus, it was written by Christopher Marlowe of Helen of Troy, that she had a face that launched a thousand ships. Helen was so beautiful that Paris of Troy fell into an irresponsible love affair and stole hid her from King Menelaus of Sparta, Sparta, sparking a ten years long war. And it was written, was this the face that launched a thousand ships and burned the topless towers of Ilium, sweet Helen, Make me immortal with a kiss. Now, in our classics class, in my grammar school, we used to love to say, was this the face that cracked a thousand mirrors and burned down the towers of Troy? Of course, you know, middle schoolers were still struggling with what love is and how that all feels. Paris lost his beloved Troy because of the love of a woman. Poor Dr. Faustus lost his soul when he traded it for an eternity in hell with a vision of the same Helen whom he had raised from death by a necromantic incantation. Love, true love, as the hymn calls it, or genuine love, as St. Paul calls it in Romans 12, manifests the presence of God. God is love proclaims St. John. True love is the love born of sacrifice, born of the Holy Spirit, the love of selfless sacrifice that overcomes the world, even love of enemy, which has been our theme over the last week on Facebook. You see it coming up again and again. Love your enemies, which is the calling of every Christian, a very, very, very difficult calling indeed especially during election season. This is what Peter failed to realize when he vowed to prevent Jesus' sacrificial death. In one moment, Peter's faith, as, as Father Jeff pointed out to us last week, as Peter's faith is celebrated for naming Jesus as the Messiah, and then in the next moment, Peter is called Satan by Jesus for clinging to him. 
with a lesser love that fails to give up to release Jesus to his higher purpose. So one question for us to ponder today is, what, what or whom are you trying to preserve in the name of love? What of our human affections that fail by comparison to the higher love causes us to fall out of step with God? Right up to the end, repentance and restoration was offered to Dr. Faustus, but he stubbornly held on to his right to be condemned to hell. He could not in his arrogance give up his pride in order to be restored to grace. It was the wrong kind of love, love of self, that did him in. Jesus said, Peter, you are a stumbling block to me for your setting your mind not on divine things but on human things. Human things are things we want to possess. Possession is not true love. Sting sang it this way. If you love someone, tell them the rest. Set them free. Release people to go into God's higher purpose. I had a friend some years back who sort of attached himself to me as my bodyguard. I didn't ask him to be my bodyguard. He just took that job upon himself. I was his priest, and as long as he was around, no harm was going to come to me. He was a hog-riding, leather-bound, do-rag-wearing, bearded, earring, Vietnam veteran named Wimpy, who had my back. postal worker. <laughs> you know, when you think about it, you want friends like that, kind of. This is what Peter reminds me of when, when he pulls Jesus aside to say, over my dead body will all these terrible things happen to you, Jesus. Was this love? Yes, it was a sort of love, but one that was based on self-interest. Really. He didn't want to lose his friend. None of us wants that. He was well-intentioned, but misguided, like Wimpy. One time, Wimpy even stood up to a bishop. Wow, in front of a lot of people, too. God wants our trust in him to be so deep running that we leave room for his purposes in the lives of others. And ourselves. And our life for others to be so genuine that we would never engage them in our protective cocoons that we build for them just because we want to hold on to them. Now just as, a, as, a, as an example, right now is the time of year where parents are saying goodbye, many of them, to their children, once again sending them off to college if they're not enrolled in virtual courses right now this year. Either for the first time or once again as the school year starts. And little kids, you remember the feeling, releasing them into a great unknown, dying inside a little bit. I admit, one time we followed the bus all the way to school when we moved to a new town. We wanted to make sure they got to the right place. We didn't admit it to anybody, but we're admitting it now. Releasing them into a great unknown. We wish that we could keep them close and protect them from viruses evil people, hucksters. But they know that if they will love them enough to release them into God's care, that very love manifests God in them. Have you ever wondered why Jesus' words sometimes resonate deep within our souls, but on the conscious level, they're hard to understand? On the conscious level, it's very difficult to live out what Jesus says? like love your enemies. Have you ever wondered why Jesus drew people to himself, but many others rejected him in anger? We read the scriptures and we say to ourselves, how could it possibly be? One time Scarlet was looking at a picture of Jesus being taken down from the cross. Our little uh, three-year-old grandchild, how old is she? Three. Three, okay. Lost track there for a minute. And she said, why did they kill him? 
And we tried to explain it. And she couldn't get it through her mind. And we read the scriptures and we say, why did that have to happen? And yet sometimes I think that if I was there, I may have been an angry mom. Why is that the way it is for us? Why one minute you can act and feel so connected with God and so holy, and the next minute you can be so full of sinful and hateful thoughts and attitudes without even realizing that you switched from one to the other? Why are we able to be like that? That's what happened to Peter. One moment through a deep connection to the divine, he proclaimed that Jesus was the promised one sent from God to save the world. And then the next moment, he became worried about losing his friend and unwittingly stood in the way of the divine plan of God. The reason that you and I and Peter waffle so is because we humans are dualistic beings. We are made up, hopefully this is a helpful construct for you, we are made up of the false self and the true self living in the same being. There's the false self and there's the true self. The false self or the little self, some call it, or the separated self is disconnected from divine love. The false self is a necessary and needed part of us, but it is not all of who we are. The danger is that when we think that we are only that small and separated self. Our attachment to the false self has to die to allow the true self, our basic and unchangeable identity of God, to live fully and freely. The true self, Thomas Merton said, should not be thought of as anything but life itself. It is the true you that is connected to be itself. This is not the little being that you and I get attached to and take too seriously all the time, but it is universal being, the one in whom we live and move and have our being. Lots of people think that that actually is a direct quote of the prayer book, which it is, but the prayer book is actually quoting St. Paul when he was addressing the people of Athens. This God that you call the unknown God is the ground of our being. He is the one in whom we live and move and have our very existence. Your true self is life and being and love. Love is what you were made for. And love is who you are. When you live outside of this love, you're not living from your true being or with true consciousness. When you become too comfortable with your separate self and you begin to call that your life, you'll get trapped at that level. You will hold on to it for dear life because that's the only life you think you have. Unless someone tells you about the bigger life or you've had a conscious connection with the deepest ground of your being, there's no way you're going to let go of your separate self. But your attachment to that separate self has to die. Or the single grain of wheat remains just a single grain. As Jesus said, unless it falls into the ground and dies. Like he did. Bringing many souls with him into new life. That's why Jesus said you've got to take up your cross and follow me. If you try to save your life, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake by letting go of that false self of yours with all of its efforts to hang on to the little life you've made, you'll step into the bigger life you were meant for. Jesus said in today's gospel, what profit is it to gain the world to forfeit your soul? The struggle between the false self and the true self is real and ongoing. We know that, we sense it, we live it every day. But there's good news. Even though Peter failed many times, and miserably so, in this struggle between the true self and the false self, 
In the end, when Jesus came to restore him, Peter became the chief of the apostles because he traded his love of self for the love of God and for selfless love of others. Our opening hymn's refrain was God is love and where true love is, God himself is there. And to end today, this is what living out of the bigger life of the true self and being connected with the divine love of Jesus looks like. And Paul gave it to us in a synop, in a synoptic form in Romans chapter 12. Let love be genuine. Love one another with mutual affection. Put others first in value and worth. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and extending hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty. Associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. But take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. These words that Paul finally escaped and allowed his false self to die on that road to Damascus. One who was on his way to imprison and kill Christians just for believing in Jesus was converted and wrote these words. That is what it looks like. Amen. Please stand with me. And let us say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name they may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land 
and all of the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in mind and body or spirit, especially Sandra, Skip, Lynn, Jenna Rose, Deacon Bill, Seth, the Reeves family, Reverend Moore, Elaine, Martha B., Alex, Spencer, Judy, Karen, Joan, Martha S., Jude, Cindy, Denise, Dillard, Tur Dillard Tur Tim, Kylie, Michelle, and all others who we name before you now. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we ask that all who are affected by this virus be held in your loving care in this time of uncertainty. Help us to know what is ours to do. We know you did not cause this suffering, but that you are with us in it and through it. Help us to recognize your presence in acts of kindness in moments of silence, and in the beauty of the created world. Grant peace and protection to all of the humanity for their well-being and for the benefit of the earth. Amen. Amen. God of all wisdom and love, look with favor upon all teachers, administrators, students, and families as they make important decisions for the opening of school during this time of great uncertainty. Assist with wisdom and compassion the administrators who speak to tailor teaching options to the differing needs of the students. Strengthen the teachers along with their assistants and volunteers as they seek to address the multiple needs of the students in their care. Grant your wisdom to the parents and guardians who are all faced with daunting and perplexing decisions this year. And enable the children to learn well within the methods of learning and other decisions made for them. Protect all who are involved at every level from the effects of the coronavirus, so that the eternal rights of wisdom and knowledge, which are the rights of every human being, may, we be, may be passed on and received with eagerness and joy for the peace and welfare of the world and to your glory. This we ask in the name of our good teacher, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. 
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Good to see all of you. It's very tempting, you know, since I haven't seen some of you in a long time, it's very tempting to hug you while we're here. And of course, that's supposed to be a no-no, and we try not to look out for everyone, for one another, so we don't do that, and we share our love in other ways. But um, also, for you that I've not seen in a while, um, I'm really uh, missing you as well, and wish that you could be here in pray and hope for the day where we can all be back together. I want to let you know that we are looking at a day for a fall event where we can, more of us can be together outside under the tents when the weather gets cooler and have just a good day together. And we're also planning on having two, going back to two services uh, sometime in the fall. We're not exactly sure which day that will be either. Uh, because uh, CDC recommendations, once the COVID numbers continue to fall a bit, actually will allow for us to have roughly 28 people here in the congregations. What is that, 56 people in here on a Sunday, not to mention the midweek services and the Saturday services. So um, we, we feel like we're sort of trying to crawl back and uh, because we need one another, we need that fellowship. So if there's no other way to do it than we do a lot of things online. And I would love to see more of you attending uh, Bible studies and book studies when they're offered, things like that, just so we can stay connected. Because when I see your faces online, I really wish that I could just reach through and touch you. You really exist. You're really alive. And it's not just by hope and it's not by imagination. So anyway, uh, we're getting ready to turn to the table. Father Jeff, do you have any announcements for us? I do. Okay. Yep. Uh, just a personal invitation to uh, a worship experience and a Bible study experience uh, uh, Saturday. And every other Saturday at 6.30 p.m. we will have a Bible study here for uh, those who are socially distanced and safe and um, and I will be calling a few of you I'd like to have kind of a, a, uh, a critical mass or a, a core of maybe about six people uh, it'd be great if we have ten but uh, be thoughtful about and prayerful about uh, joining us on every other Saturday starting the first Saturday of September. 6.30 for the Bible study. It's only a 30-minute study. Uh, and then worship at 7 p.m. Now this worship at 7 will be Holy Eucharist and it will involve those uh, same readings that we would have on, uh, on Sunday morning. So in the Jewish way of thinking, you know, Sunday actually this 
starts when the sun goes down on Saturday. So this will be like a Sunday service, but it'll be Saturday evenings every other week. 6.30 for the Bible study and 7 p.m. for the worship experience. And we hope to have Zoom with that. The tech part of that has not been worked out, but we will be in touch. Thank you. In other words, what Father Jeff is trying to say is that he hasn't been tutored on how to run Zoom. <laughs> but hopefully that will happen before the first one. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Father Jeff. If there's nothing else we need to discuss today as a church body and as a group, I say to you all who are online and all of you here in this place, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. Thank mm -hmm.
us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by His glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Give us our trespasses. 
trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. He said, My own peace I give to you. Not as the world gives a greeting, do I give to you peace. So let not your hearts be troubled, and neither be afraid. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and look upon you with his love for you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Our final hymn today is hymn number 344, Lord, dismiss us with your blessing, verses 1 and 3. Hallelujah.